I'm going to cover this content in next 10 to 12 lectures, right? So we will go in the detail of each. So the first thing that uh, I'm going to discuss with all of you is the need of the network layer. Part of that I have already spoken to you. Uh, we had a great uh, detailed discussion, but still I will would like to point out something. So you have a better connectivity. Then uh, what are the, the second point that we're going to discuss in very detail is the functionalities or you can call it responsibilities of the network layer. So what are the responsibilities? The first and the most important responsibility is it does logical addressing. So when I say logical addressing, you need to understand there are two categories, IPv4 and IPv6. In that, we will talk about classful addressing architecture, classless addressing architecture, subnetting and supernetting. And you have a lot of numericals to solve here. If your target is to appear for a gate exam, assume that you may get two marks question from this section in your gate exam also, right? Uh, then, then the packetizing. We'll try to look at uh, when net data comes to the network layer, network layer is adding its own header. So exactly we will try to understand what is the format of the header, what are the fields that you have inside the header, what is the functionality of each field of the header. We will, uh, in the parallel, we will also come across the discussion which is related to a fragmentation, which is very important. And the fragmentation is required because of the MTU. You already know what is MTU, it's a maximum transfer unit which is the limitation imposed by your data link layer, right? So that we will go in the depth. Then we will look at the routing. Actually, routing involves three things, uh, delivery, forwarding, and updation of the routing table. But the major portion of the routing topic is occupied by the updation of the routing table, which is where we have, we're going to study two categories of the algorithm, static and dynamic algorithms. Then we will look at uh, congestion control. And in addition to that, we will look at the address mapping where we do error reporting and multicasting. So some protocol I will try to explain you like ARP, RARP, ICMP, IGMP. You must have remembered these all are at network layer, but ARP and RARP are below IP and ICMP and IGMP are above IP. And the major protocol that we have at the network layer is the IP. So this is all the about the content that we have set for next 10 to 12 lectures. I hope uh, I am able to convince you what we're going to do for next 10 to 12 lectures. The first topic that I have today is the need of, need of the network layer that get over in few minutes and then we slowly and gradually move to the functionalities of the network layer. Uh, so we will talk about logical addressing and that get extended for a few lectures. Right, so let me start now. So the first thing is the need of the network layer. As I've already said, friends, in the previous session, your data link layer limitation is it can do the data delivery only hop to hop. It cannot carry your packet across the network. So in the yesterday's example, if that picture comes in front of you, if you remember, there were three local networks which have been connected by two routers, router one and router two. And my source was uh, inside network one and my destination was inside network two. My source IP address was A and my destination IP address was B. So if I want to carry the packet from source, which has been part of the network one to the destination, which has been part of the network three and in between I have two routers, my data link layer cannot do it. I need a network layer, which can do the data delivery across the network. Right, so look at this diagram. It's a very uh, fantastic diagram that you should remember for a lifetime. That's what my wish is. Look at the things. See, Evo, who is giving the data to the network layer? Transport layer is giving the data to the network layer. Right, so that big uh, rectangle is actually a network layer. Inside that, transport layer is giving the data. W what network layer is do doing? It it's at, at its own header. And so, adding, uh, you know, by adding header, what we are doing is we are making it packet. So that process is called packetizing. And then it pass it to the data link layer. So network layer essentially depends on the data link layer. Now what data link layer does, it does not bother. It's not to look after, it's not none of the business of the network layer. What network layer expect from the data link layer, whatever I have given to you, you should deliver. You should deliver. So network layer is like a boss for a data link layer. But everybody has a boss in the world, you know. So Again, transport layer is a boss for the network layer. So transport layer is giving the data to the network layer and the expectation of the transport layer is to get the same data. Now, 
Now look at the other end. See, this is the sender machine, left hand side. And on the right hand side, I have a receiver machine where data is coming from the data link layer again to the network layer. What network layer will do? It will check its header. Uh, it will do some housekeeping. What has been sent by the sender's network layer? It has received the same thing. And based on that, it will pass it to the transport layer. Right. So th this is the uh, reason, the functionality or the main responsibility of your network layer that has been depicted in the diagram. Now look at this diagram. If you look at this diagram, uh, I have a source which has been connected to this network A, and I have a destination which is connected to this network, right? And the destination is D. Now, if you look at, there are two routers again. Here one is the S1, another one is the S3. And when I say when, probably uh, let's say these two router might be connected via optical fibers. And you, you can see that this, this router S1 actually is having uh, connectivity with S2 as well as S3 also, right? So, uh, so when the packet comes to the S1, it has to take a decision whether it forward it to S2 or whether it forward it to the S3. I'm not going in the detail right now, but you look at this diagram the S data link layer is passing the data to the S1 data link layer, S1 is passing the data to the S3's data link layer and S3's data link layer is passing the data to the D's data link layer. So this is the hop to hop delivery done by data link layer. If it is an objective, I don't require network layer at all. The meaning is that if I need to have a communication only between A and S1, I really don't care. Right, but the question is who who tells the S1 to deliver the data to the data link layer of S3 rather than the data link layer of S2, and that is where the network layer will come into the picture. Right, so the responsibility of the data link layer is limited to the hop to hop delivery, but now at network layer, I want to carry a packet from A's network layer to the D's network layer. Right, so in between, I need a support of S1 network layer, S3 network layer. You, you must realize that your routers, intermediate routers have three layers. Your intermediate routers have three layers, right? Physical layer, data link layer, network layer, right? All, all intermediate routers has three layers. One is the physical layer, other one is the data link layer, right? Then the, you have the network layer. Right, so uh, this you have to assume, whereas your source and destination has only the, uh, it has all the five layers, like application layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, and physical layer. And when you talk about switch, it has only the two layer. Right, so this diagram clearly depicted that your data link layer can do the data delivery only hop to hop. And my objective is to carry the packet from a source machine, network layer to the destination machine layer, uh, destination machines network layer and that is the reason that is the reason you have a network layer on the source machine you have a network layer on the s1 you have a network layer on s3 right and, and that's how the network layer will help you now let, let me explain you for example s1 network layer is getting a packet it has a header and header has a destination address so from the destination address and looking at the routing table s1 is able to take a decision I don't require to pass it to S2, but I need to pass it to the S3 because destination might be connected to S3 or it is towards the S3, right? So that, that decision has been taken by your network layer and where it has a functionality of routing, right? So this, this is the reason why you need a network layer. So when you want to carry your packet across the network like this, you, you need a network layer. Right? Now look at this diagram. This is very important diagram as far as the some, some, some important uh, things are concerned. You look at this diagram. Uh, the A, diagram A represents network layer at source. Diagram B represents network layer at destination. And diagram C represents network layer at router. Right? So uh, let us look at first at network layer at the source or a sender. So you are getting the data from the transport layer. Right? Then uh, it goes for the processing at the network layer. This dotted square, uh, dotted rectangle represents the network layer, right? So it uh, goes into the network layer processing unit where uh, it will look at the header, right? It, it has a routing table and, and everything, 
right? So IP packet and routing information will become the part of the header and then it will be forwarded to the data link layer. If you look at the destination, uh, on the destination node, it is getting the data from the data link layer, right? So what it does, it has a header plus data, it does the processing and it take the header out and deliver the data as it has received here. You can see by green, uh, green rectangle, it has received from the transport layer green rectangle and it, it has handed over the same thing, right? So it's doing its duty uh, fantastically. And now look at the network layer at the router where it has a big role to play. What it does is when, when, when it receives the data from the data link layer, it, it does look at the header, it, it looks at the destination IP address, it takes the help of the routing table. From the routing table, this router might be connected to multiple networks. It will decide on which network I have to pass the data and, and that's how it will go on. Right? So this is very important, network layer at the router. So this is the reason why you need to have a network layer at all. But remember, one important conclusion, if my objective is only to have a data communication inside the inside the local area network, I don't require network layer at all. If I want to carry my packets across the network, I need network layer. I hope I have made the point very clear, right? Any any question that you have in technology, for socket switching, packet switching, and the message switching. What we are using in the internet at data link layer is the packet switching. And again, your packet switching can have two concepts. One is called virtual socket, and another one is the datagram. Now, what internet has chosen is a datagram approach. It, it does not use the virtual socket approach, right? So what I'm saying is, for switching, you have three uh, options. Socket switching, packet switching, message switching. Internet uses packet switching. Packet switching has two approaches. One is the virtual socket, another one is the datagram, and internet is uses packet switching datagram approach. Right? The internet has chosen the datagram approach to switching in the network layer. It uses the universal address defined in the network layer to route the packets from the source to destination. Don't worry, you will get into that. Communication at network layer is connection less, very important. Communication which is happening at the network layer is connection less. You can ask me a question here why. The reason is at network layer you have a protocol named as IP, right? And the full form is internet protocol. And internet protocol is basically a connection less protocol. And it is all, you know, it's all and all responsibility of the internet protocol to ensure the communication at the network layer. And because the IP is connectionless, IP, I'm not talking about IP addresses, I'm talking about IP uh, internet protocol. Internet protocol is connectionless. So communication at network layer, which is happening, is connectionless.